Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of Marvel Premier. No, The Power of Warlock. I'm always surprised Marvel haven't brought out a Marvel Premier book. That would be quite nice. Man God Reborn. Now, this is 2022-2023 Warlock Omnibus. What does it say there? Adam Warlock Omnibus. You can see all the artists there and writers, etc. involved. And there's all the various titles. Created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, reconceived by Roy Thomas and Gil Kane, resurrected as a tormented god by Jim Starlin. He put the story there. I guess he was, wasn't he? He was a tormented god. But still, Fantastic Four, of course, the origin one, that was brilliant. I love that one. Issue 66, and then obviously 67. Then you got Thor, then you got the Marvel premieres, and then it went into Warlock. Didn't do so well, unfortunately, Warlock. I thoroughly enjoyed them. And then they finished off the stories in the Hulk. But did they finish the stories off? No, because, of course, then Jim Starlin took over and there were some truly weird stories in that. And then you finish it off with some, of course, classic Thanos stories at the end. 904 pages. And before I go any further, I'm just going to quickly show you this book. This is the gallery edition. Now, this gallery edition... now. The Warlock ones I've had in a variety of different forms. Of course, there's the Essential Volume set of Warlock. There's the Marvel Masterworks ones. Also, in the UK, we also had reprinting of, obviously, all the Adam Warlock ones. Of course, the original comics, all great. But this one, really, really nice. Now, I'm sort of now thinking, should I get rid of this? Because all the material in this is actually now covered in the omnibus. Of course, this is slightly bigger. You can see it's a much larger edition. And very, very nice quality. I love this. It's got some bonus material, but the moment bonus material, I think, matches also that's available in this omnibus. Now, the omnibus edition has got a huge amount of bonus material. Really, really good. Now, you've got there, Warlock omnibus. You can see that, Adam Warlock. Very, very nice quality all the way. And you can see that there's the bonus material at the back. A lot of that's in, obviously, black and white, etc. But it's, I mean, that's quite a substantial amount of this omnibus. So inside, what we got, there's all the various titles that you've got there. Fantastic Four, 66, you can see Thor, 165, 166, Marvel Premier 1, 2, which I've got, Marvel Premier 1 anyway. Warlock, 115, Strange Tales, 178, 281. Oh, they weren't actually that many in Strange Tales. Just not a little area that they just produced a few stories in that. And then Incredible Hulk, you've got the annual Marvel Team Up, as well as Marvel 2 in 1. You can see, obviously, all the writers and artists there. And then you've got... See, brilliant bit of artwork there. And there's the details of all the various people involved. Letterers, colorists, editors, etc. As well as the artists, of course. And there's the contents. You can see all details. So it starts all the way back in 1967. Got a lovely introduction by Roy Thomas. All the way through to 1980. So these stories, 1980. Now, <clears throat> obviously, they could continue maybe with another volume, volume two, volume three. I must admit, I haven't been following the career in the comics of Warlock, so maybe there's another volume, volume two, volume three, volume four. Of course, at the moment, there's still no epic collections of these, which is odd. That's why I got this. I thought, you know, I'm not going to wait for the epic collections ever to come out, or the complete collections, whatever they decide to do. But there's the Fantastic Four, 66. That's what lurks behind the beehive. Very unusual title. One that doesn't really immediately attract the mystery of the year. Is it really the mystery of the year? But still, they, was, they could put a question mark, couldn't they? Mystery of the year. But still, you've got Alicia Masters there. And, of course, obviously, Ben, obviously, that same obviously probably never happens in the story, of course, but it's just great the way they all split it. Brilliant artwork, of course, all the way through from Jack Kirby. You've got these, these characters here, sort of like AIM, but obviously not AIM or HYDRA, but still. And you've got the cocoon. What's in the cocoon? At last, you find out what's in the cocoon. When opens the cocoon, featuring the creature in lock 41. I must admit, I didn't even realise that. I love that little blurb there. Creature in lock 41. What's in, I wonder what's in lock 40 or lock 39. Was there something even, or maybe 42 was even probably worse. But they show, of course, details how Warlock is created, or him, as he's called in this. I don't know actually saying that they give him a name, actually. I don't think there is a name at this point. He becomes him later on. Of course, there you've got the good old classic Crystal and Human Torch. And you've got lovely, though, always those great scenes of whizzing around all these places. But still, I'm not going to spoil the story how it all happens at the end. On to the next one. Him! And you've got Thor, of course, a real classic one. Brilliant, brilliant story. Vince Coletta 
And Jack Kirby, I know people always have comments about Vince Clayton. Now I'm just going to do one about Daredevil. I've got a Daredevil epic collection. I know it's virtually all of it is Vince Clayton. <laughs> the time I... But still, I know a lot of people have opinions there. You've got here, obviously, him, Madman, Stay Thy Hand, etc., etc. And you've got some, obviously, very powerful dramatic... The one called him, born in a cocoon, born to be invincible. No question mark or anything at that point. He's obviously convinced. Harmony throws, obviously, no matter, I'm him. And, of course, born of man, not born of man, crazy to be invincible. And, of course, the hammer bounces off him. My beloved Sif. Next one is classic, High Evolutionary. And it's nice they combine some. I always really... High Evolutionary is one of those weird characters, of course, originated in the Hulk comic books. And you've got fishing the unleashed power of being known only as him. Of course, eventually we know him as Warlock. <laughs> And men shall call him Warlock. And then Adam Warlock, just to give him full name. Not him anymore. What a great cover that is. Tomorrow's Superhero. And I love the fact they've got that. You've got the Hulk and Thor. And the they don't turn up in the book. So obviously, because of the stories, of course, the original stories, that's the reason why they're on the cover. Why they didn't include the Fantastic Four. That would have been, why not have the Human Torch in the background as well? Put everyone in. But still, they don't turn up because this is on Counter-Earth. This is the alternate universe story. And I think this was probably the first Marvel really dipped into alternate universe story. It's not really an alternate universe. It is in our universe. But it's an, sort of, obviously, another Earth on the other side of the sun, which is really doesn't work very well, unfortunately, now. And also the scientists would have noticed, I'm quite certain, there would have been some sort of but still, I always love the high evolution. His security techniques are not very good. He's always doing these things and going into a sort of deep sleep to build, but leaves himself totally unguarded. Near enough. I mean, really? You'd think he'd have a force field or something around him, wouldn't you? But still, just brilliant Gil Kane artwork all the way through, and he obviously meets these friends. Now, I don't know if these characters ever turned up again. They're sort of like Rick Jones sort of character. There's that sort of element of, like, Captain Marvel with Rick Jones. You've got these characters, which is actually quite nice. They added, added four or five. Well, four, obviously, in this, which is good. I always think sometimes when it's just one character, it's nice to actually have a group of people that sort of know about your this character. But still, Power of Warlock, issue one. I love that when it came out. I remember buying that. And the day of the prophet. There's the high evolutionary at that point, still there. And you've got some various other characters that are. Uh, and then you've got some brilliant artwork. But the thing is, I really love this. And for me, I think issue four, issue five was the first issue I got around that sort of time. This one, obviously, issue three. Got now, of course, this is Counter Earth. Quite a lot of the characters that we know in our Marvel Universe are not on this planet. They're obviously on. <laughs> But there are some characters that are very similar. And you've got Reed Richards, you've got Doctor Doom, but they've got they're slight variations. But that was a great story. I love the Warbird story. Again, brilliant artwork there. Gil Kane. Come sing a searing song of vengeance. And you've got their classic issue four. I think it was issue five, just thinking about it. It was issue five that I got. Just brilliant. Also, of course, it does include letters pages from Counter Earth. Comments from Counter Earth. That's really good. They can actually write letters all the way from me, send it over to us. And it gives us lots of detail about reading Warlock since the debut issue. And all I can say is, wow, the artwork is great. It was. Gil Kane, just one of my favourites. But there's Doctor Who. So you've got Doctor Who there. The Death Birds, not Warbirds, Death Birds. And also, of course, got the accident. You've got, of course, Reed Richards is in this. Called the Brute in this. But it's good. Real good yarn. Though the artwork does go downhill a bit at that point. Gil Kane leaves, which is always sad because Gil Kane for me is one of, my, one of the greatest. And you can see the artwork doesn't really work so well. Next couple of issues. Still, there are actually some good scenes in that. And he's still got the man beast, of course. There's good old man beast. Always turning up. But the series ends. Issue eight, that was it. Don't know why. Obviously, sales were not brilliant. Personally, I can't understand why. I loved it. I bought it when it came out. And then, but they finished off the stories in here. Crisis on Counter-Earth. At least they didn't wait too long to finish it off. So you can see there, good old, I am the president. Haven't you guessed? I am the president. <laughs> Would they? Issue 176. And then you've got that story. And of course, Warlock is blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to tell you so. But the thing is, then it goes really cosmic. A bit like Captain Marvel. That's those stories. He suddenly went, it changed quite dramatically. Well, same with here. Strange Tales. 
very odd that they chose Strange Tales while they just didn't go straight into, back into Warlock again. The Warlock issues, issue nine, would have made more sense, but obviously they'd slot there for Strange Tales to try them out again. But I remember buying it at the time, I just thought, wow, this, and just the artwork is just stunning. Really very, very powerful. And also, as it's a cosmic story, Magus. We had Magus, Magus. And also, you course, we have Pip, Gamora, all these sort of characters, and just truly some very, very great, you got here, of course, the damn gem, as he says there. Of course, that is a important storyline later, a lot later. But some truly weird stories. How strange our destiny. You've got, obviously, Magus there again. Uh, let's uh, escape into the inner prison. And there's some surreal stories in this. Strange death of Adam Warlock. Very, very odd. My superior never. I am death, he says. And again, Warlock issue there. Now, little man, you die. Yes, but what a way to go. He's got there. Tr Pip the troll there. And, oh, that one's a great story as well. The Star Thief. Just superb. Really enjoyed it. Star Thief. Great little story. Now, I don't know if this was a very popular storyline. I thoroughly enjoyed it anyway. That was a sort of two-parter that didn't really fit particularly with the rest of the stories, but still was a great, great yarn. And you got a storyline. Why? Why have the fates conspired? And, of course, unleashed at last. And, of course, Thanos and all those sort of storylines are in, in this as well. And Moon Dragon. Now it goes into the Avengers. So you've got the Avengers story, is into Spider-Man, all the various characters. An absolute classic. Classic one. I love these ones. To duel a mad god. And of course, you've got there, of course, the gem again. Again, a very important storyline there. But... Also, we've got is the next one, Paragon Lives. Now, I haven't actually ever read the story, so I'm not going to say that I know anything about it, but there's a little bit about Paragon there, character. So, one day I will actually get to run. Now, I've read, I've read virtually all these stories, but that one I haven't read, the, the Hulk one. I will get around to it. This was great, The Coming of Her. <laughs> they had to introduce that story. So you've got there, Starhawk, The Coming of Her. And you've got those, and that's that. What a great, just a really, really, really good volume all the way through. And, of course, the extras are just great as well. I don't want to show how it ends. There's some of the extras. You've got a brilliant bonus art there. Lots of it, like Vince Coletta, and you can see just there, the ink in there. And, ooh, bending the pages. There's also, obviously, there, some brilliant covers. Now, I don't know if there's any covers that were never sort of done or whatever. Uh, I think... Not there's most of these are just original art, but I always love these to see these are always great. I love looking at them. It'd be nice to actually see an omnibus, not an omnibus, an artist edition or an artisan edition of those would be good. And yet another foom. I truly wish that they would bring out a foom volume. I don't know what because you can see it here. Now this is what it should be a foom sort of magazine like this. This size, an omnibus edition of foom, all of the issues. I think it was about 21. They weren't very, so I imagine they could fit them all into one omnibus. Why not? Just would be absolutely lovely to see. And I love this as well, the pencil work there of this issue that obviously was never done. So I can't remember which issue was it. Lost issue, as it says here. Anticipated to run possibly as issue 15 or 16. Just actually, just, it would have been a really good story as well. It's quite depressing that they never, ever fi actually finished this off, but it's maybe one day they will. Maybe someone will turn around and ink it, but of course, if they haven't got all the pages or something, it might be a slight issue. But still, you've got, of course, the Avengers Annual 7. And then you've got some, obviously got some colour bonus too as well. You've got all the good old, I love these ones. Always quite nice to see there. And also more alien races. And of course, the world's greatest comics you've got there. The Mystery of the Year, What Lurks. And of course, the Cocoon one there. And many others. And also, of course, a lot of these have been reprinted. So why did they include those? The Silver Surfer one. That's strange. Um, huh. All right, obviously it must have included bits of those as well. But still, they got those covers as well. I'm not just quickly reading that. Maybe they included the series presented stories from Strange Tales 178 to 181, as well as Warlock 1911. Yeah, didn't realise that. And you've got some more Warlock ones, and yet more Warlock. And you've got some lovely Warlock special edition artwork there. And that is... The Warlock Omnibus. It's just an absolute... I'm really pleased I got this finally. I have been, this is one of the volumes I've been waiting for for ages. Baffling why they hadn't brought it out. 
like Captain Marvel, this one, the Warlock one, just brilliant. Finally, get, the artwork is just first rate all the way through it, especially the Gil Kane work, which I just absolutely love. Always loved his work. That's the why probably it's been a bit depressing that we've always just only had this gallery edition. That's why I was waiting for the Gil Kane work. I love it. Absolutely brilliant. So that's the Warlock Omnibus Edition. Just fairly recently come out. Really worth checking out. So there, and you can see all these great issues in that. Totally recommended.